Ladies and gentlemen, our inductee, Warren Hampton Hamp Moore. Warren Hampton Hamp Moore was a three year starter for Coach Vernon Wells, Albert Aggies. First row, left to right, number 23, Lawrence Biddle, number 45, Boyd Bailey, number 66, David Piper, number 26, John Warren, 15, Tim Duckett, number 11, Tommy Stewart, number 31, Randy Gibson, number 21, Jim Floyd, number 28, Mike Kitchens, uh, number 68, Stacy Maynard, number 34, Stan Keimer, number 20 is Greg Canfield on the second row, left to right, number 9, Randy Powell, number 42, Greg Jones, Number 86, Mike Powell. Number 96, James Carroll. Number 71, James Reed. Number 84, Robert Christ. Number 54, Thomas Carroll. Number 85, Tim Rogers. Number 77, John Browning. Number 10, Collins Wakefield. Number 32, Dane Smith. Number 30, Keith Knight. Third row, left to right, number 72, Alan Champion. Number 76, Donald Ball. Number 88, Steve Vineyard. Number 79, Bruce Pierce. Mike Loki is number 24, Barry Reeves number 90, Mike Compton 40, Boyd Lohman 65, Hamp Moore is number 63, Mike Gray 46, Gil Bruce 12, and Mark Ledbetter number 79. His Aggie football line coach during this era was Marshall County Hall of Fame board member Richard Ferguson. According to the annual, Coach Ferguson was called Bungo Baby. The 1975 and 76 Aggies were county champions with a combined overall record of 15, 4, and 1. Hamp earned all county and all region honors both years. He served as the team captain his senior season in 1976. The big senior was most valuable offensive lineman and scholastic award winner. He also threw the discus and ran the mile on the Aggie track team According to Coach Ferguson, we won five consecutive Marshall County Championships and Hamp earned a lot of points in these meets. We're looking at part of the track team here. Hamp is on the back row. He's the tallest man, the second from the left. On the second row, third from the left, is Hall of Famer Rod Rudolph. Hall of Fame board member Richard Ferguson was the coach. He's on the back row, the far right. Here is the 1977 Scholars Bowl team of Albertville High School. Left to right, Mark Ledbetter, Shane Files, Joel McGriff, and Hamp Moore. Albertville High School was proud of Hamp Moore. School spirit, honor student, even greater things ahead for him. The acceptance of a football scholarship to the University of North Alabama was the start of something big. Number 66. Hamp was a four-year starter for Coach Wayne Grubbs University of North Alabama Lions. During those years, the big offensive guard led the Lions to a 31-11-1 record, including a Gulf South Conference Championship in 1980. Hamp was an academic All-GSC in 1979, 1980, and 1981. He was All-GSC offensive guard in 1980 and 1981. Great as a pass blocker, as seen, and equally as great on the run, as you'll see in just a few moments. In his senior season of 1981, Hamp served as captain, and he garnered the most valuable offensive lineman and scholastic award. From the ABC televised game of Troy State, here you'll see Hamp in action. Watch the right guard, number 66. From the 29 of Troy State, North Alabama moving the ball effectively. On the wing back around Dwayne Williams, the wide receiver has it, and Williams is down the far sideline. If he doesn't step out of bounds, it's a touchdown, North Alabama. Dwayne Williams, a junior wide receiver from Jacksonville, Florida, on a reverse. They pull one out of the playbook here. Don't think that Troy State was looking for this one. They got excellent blocking up front on the play. He sprung him around the corner. He uses that speed that he's got, 4'6 speed, to get down the field. He knows where that goal line is. Hamp Moore, number 66, the senior guard from Albertville, Alabama, with the big block to spring number 33, Dwayne Williams. And now Nelson McMurrin will attempt the extra point, and it is good. Fourth Moore graduated with honors in 1982 and was a recipient of an NCAA postgraduate scholarship. 
the first UNA athlete to earn such an award. It was another 19 years before another UNA athlete earned one of these NCAA scholarships. Hemp continued his education at the University of Alabama, Birmingham, graduating in 1986. He began his career as a doctor of optometry in the U.S. Navy before returning to the Shoals area. Following his return, Moore served 15 years as color commentator for the radio broadcast of Bradshaw and Florence High School football. Seven yard line by Heath Devaney, the big defensive tackle on the left side, and there was no running room to start. Hamp Moore, they gave it to the house on first down, and he couldn't find any room. Now Bradshaw tried to run the counter sweep that time, and they just let a little bit of penetration in, and Quali never was able to get started. It'll be second down. They actually it's Miller. It's the free safety. Here's the give to Cooper off the right side again. This time he's got some running room. He's at midfield, and he's got a first down in Russellville territory near the 47. Tyler Green, the linebacker, came up to make the stop, and the Bruins have a first and 10 as Quali Cooper breaks loose and makes up for his loss. He picked up 17 yards that time. Yeah, that was really good because we had second and long with the loss on the first down. Quali went around the right end and then following a block by Keith Cox was able to pick up the first down. 1998, UNA named Hemp Moore to its 50th anniversary football team. Today, Dr. Hemp Moore is an optometrist in private practice and the owner of Comsec Eye Care in Florence. Hemp serves as secretary treasurer of the UAB School of Optometry Alumni Association. He combines his profession with his love of sports by serving on the UNA sports medicine staff. Ladies and gentlemen, our inductee, Warren Hampton, Hemp Moore. Well, thank you, Bill, for that introduction. I want to thank the board and the selection committee uh, for all the hard work that you do, this really is a first-rate affair. And, you know, I'm truly honored to be home here in Marshall County and uh, to be receiving this kind of award. You know, growing up in Albertville, this is something that I never would have expected. Um, I know my friends in, from Florence over here will be surprised to hear this, but growing up, I was never really a great all-around athlete. I uh, was able to uh, learn to play football, but I never could hit a baseball and I never could play basketball very well. But uh, with the help of my coaches and my teammates, I was able to uh, succeed at football. In preparation for tonight's event, I found a quotation from the uh, great philosopher Yogi Berra on a night he was being honored at Yankee Stadium when he said uh, that night, it was, uh, I want to thank everybody who made this night necessary. <laughs> <laughs> well, I uh, don't really think me receiving this honor tonight was necessary, but I do owe a lot of people my heartfelt gratitude. I'd first like to thank my family uh, for their support through the years. My brother Steve and his wife Alice are here, as well as my sisters Mary Lee and Laney. Laney especially was helpful uh, when I was a kid, carrying me to and from football practices. Uh, my parents, both of whom are now deceased, were Trent and Mary Jo Moore. And um, my parents had an accident relatively late in life. Me. <laughs> my dad was 53 when I was born and my mom was 46. And uh, my dad had a roofing business growing up, and from him I learned uh, how to have a good work ethic, and uh, I worked for him every summer during the hot summers, and I also learned from him that when I grew up, I did not want to be working on a roof during the summer, so uh, he helped me uh, find a different career. From uh, my mom, uh, she was a high school teacher for 34 years. She taught at Emma Sansom High School. She taught at Albertville High School. And I know some of you are, uh, are her former classmates out here. And from her, I obviously learned the importance of academics and in getting a good education. I started playing football when I was 10 years old. And I first played in the Albertville Pee Wee Football League. And I uh, played for a man named Mr. James Isbell. And Mr. Isbell just was a very enthusiastic man. And you know, I came up here without my prop. <laughs> Mr. Isbell was a very enthusiastic man, and uh, this is my helmet from when I played Pee Wee football. <laughs> and uh, I mean, look at that. It's got skulls and crossbones, and it's got stars, and you know, this is from where I hit Collins Whitefield, I think, right here, when he played for the Redskins. But uh, you know, I played another, uh, I played through junior high and high school and college. I never had a helmet that was as cool as this one, so. <laughs> We want that for the uh, member bill. All right, you can have that. I was hoping Mr. Isbell might be here, but uh, uh, he's not been able to be here. But I do owe uh, the one thing about Mr. Isbell that I remember that he taught us was that 
you know, it's fine to go out there and play football, and it, we were out there to have fun, but he always made the point of telling us that, you know, it's a lot more fun when you win. And so he uh, explained to us that, you know, we need to work hard in practice, and when you go out there, you don't just go out there to play, you go out there to win. And so I, I appreciate uh, Coach Mr. Isbell uh, teaching us to have that desire to win. I was very fortunate in Albertville to have a lot of teammates that had that same winning attitude. We had a group of guys that played together all the way through those Pee Wee Leagues, up through junior high and high school. Um, in fact, most of them uh, that, that I wanted to mention are here tonight. Gil Bruce, Collins Wakefield, Mike Loki, Thomas Carroll, Mark Ledbetter. Uh, we grew up in Albertville at a time when Albertville was not very successful in football. Uh, I think the last winning season they had had uh, when we grew up was about 1965. So all through the late 60s and early 70s when we were kids, uh, they were not very successful. But we, I remember specifically going with Collins to a football game and uh, they had lost to A-Rab or somebody and we said, well, it's going to be different when we're up there. And sure enough, it was. Uh, our ninth grade football team finished the season undefeated. And uh, that next year as sophomores, a lot of us got to start and play on that uh, team. And uh, it was a real learning experience for us. And uh, we finished that season as sophomores at 2-8. and eight. I remember uh, one night uh, we were playing Johnson High School up in Huntsville. And uh, I was playing left guard. And uh, Gil was our quarterback. And I, I remember uh, Gil probably still feels the pain from the hit that uh, my man came through when I missed the block and uh, drilled him in the back as he was dropping back to pass. You remember that? <laughs> I was expecting you to tell that story earlier, and I was hoping you wouldn't. But, uh, but we uh, really gained a lot of experience that season, and it really paid off for us the following two years. Uh, our junior year, we went eight and two, and then our uh, that was the first winning season Albert Ford had had in a long time. And then our senior season, we finished seven two and one. We won two county championships, and we just missed the state playoffs both of those seasons. Our success in high school can also be attributed to us having outstanding coaching. As I mentioned earlier, Albertville had not really had a winning season in a long time, but uh, fortunately for us, in 1973, Coach Vernon Wells came back to Albertville. And uh, with him, he brought a couple of his, uh, as assistant coaches, a couple of his former players, Coach Ronnie Little and Coach Richard Ferguson. And um, fortunately for us, we, you know, we got a, a great coaching staff that, that helped us out. And Coach Ferguson was my offensive line coach, and he, I, I want to Thank you, Coach, for the work you did in making me a better offensive lineman. And I just want you to know, once I got to UNA, I finally learned how to take that jab step, <laughs> that, that, that first step you make when you're pulling out. Because Coach Ferguson worked a long time on me trying to get that. And um, Coach Little coached me on defense. I played linebacker. But uh, perhaps more importantly, Coach Little taught me how to lift weights and how to make myself bigger and stronger. I remember uh, Coach Little came to Thomas Carroll and me uh, at the end of our sophomore, in the spring of our sophomore year, and asked us if he would, uh, we would like to start working out with him on a regular basis. And over the next two years, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we worked out together. Uh, there was very few days that we missed. And I just want Coach Little to know that uh, I realized that I would not have been a successful lineman and that I would not have received a football scholarship had not been for the help that he gave me at that time. Thank you, Coach. My experience at UNA was very similar to what I experienced in high school. UNA had not had a winning season in 14 years. I was signed by Coach Wayne Grubb in his first recruiting class. And uh, I got redshirted that first year. His first team went 5-5. Five and five, But I broke into the starting lineup as a uh, redshirt freshman the next year. And we finished that season 7-2-1. and one. Uh, The uh, following season, my sophomore year, we slipped a little bit to 6-5. and five. But then uh, after that, we had a group of guys that really rededicated ourselves. And in 1980, we just had a magical season. Uh, we finished that year with 10 wins and two losses. We made it all the way to the semifinals, losing finally to Eastern Illinois. But uh, that was the uh, year that U uh, UNA won its first Gulf South Conference championship. And we play had a, uh, just a, a fantastic game over against Jacksonville. And uh, you know, I was... Uh, Hearing earlier how Troy uh, had Jacksonville as their main rival, well, Jacksonville was our main rival too. So Jacksonville always had had success, so they were everybody's rival. But uh, we uh, played over there at Jacksonville for the conference championship, and we were ahead 28-14 in the fourth quarter. But uh, this is when uh, Jacksonville had uh, Ed Led as their quarterback, and they came storming back, and they tied the game 28-28 uh, with just about a minute to play in the game, and uh, a little like. 
all hope was lost that we were going to be able to win the game. But uh, our quarterback, Fred Riley, was a little skinny guy, about 5'9", and he threw it about as far as he could. And uh, Jerry Hill ran under it for, uh, for an 82-yard touchdown. And uh, we won that ball game. Uh, Jerry happens to be the son of the Chicago Bear great Harlan Hill. But uh, that was just an outstanding game. I remember Coach Wells was at that game, and he came up to me after the game telling me about how that was the best football game he ever saw. And, and it really was a great game. My senior season at UNA, we also, uh, again, had a, a good year. We finished that year 8-2, and two, but Jacksonville got revenge on us. They came over to Florence, and they beat us in uh, my final football game, and uh, they knocked us out of the playoffs that year. But, you know, it's been said football is the ultimate team sport, and I really believe that. You, you cannot have a successful football team with just having one or two stars. You've got to have a team that works together. And I just want my teammates to know that uh, I appreciate them, and I appreciate uh, how they made us successful. And I, I realize that you know, I would not be up here tonight receiving this if it wasn't for them. Lastly, I want to uh, thank my friends from Florence that came over tonight. Greg Thornton, Tim Taylor, Bill Cochran, John Maloney. They wanted to know if I was going to call them by name, so <laughs> I called them by name. And uh, I also want to thank my uh, other family, my mother-in-law and brother-in-law and his uh, fiance for being here. And uh, lastly, I would like to thank my beautiful wife, Melinda, and uh, our children, Nathan, Mary Claire, Dean, and Clayton. And Dean and Clayton have been very good. I'm proud of y'all for sitting there through this. <laughs> but they, they are twins, that's right. And uh, we have a wonderful life in Florence. God has truly blessed me my whole life. Thank you.